Welcome to worship this Sunday, January 15th. I am Pastor Laura, the pastor for the Southern Albemarle Charge, that is Mount Zion United Methodist and Scottsville United Methodist. I am so glad that we could worship together today. I invite us as we enter into this time of worship to prepare ourselves, to center ourselves in the Lord. Perhaps this may mean lighting a candle, representing how Christ is the light of the world and shines in our midst. Perhaps it might mean pausing the video for a moment and taking a few breaths, breathing in God, breathing out that which distracts us. But let us prepare our whole selves now for worship. Let us pray. Redeeming God, we come before you to admit our shortcomings and our mistakes. We are your beautifully flawed people who have let you down. Yet we come with hope into your presence. We humble ourselves before the one who can perfect us that we might live out our faith and witness to our redemption. May our lives tell the story of your goodness and mercy May we be your hands and feet to serve you by serving our neighbors. May our witness of your unfailing love and forgiveness offer hope to others. All this we pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. And I invite us to join together now in singing our opening hymn, Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Let us sing. Our 
Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Psalms, Psalm 40, verses 1 through 11. Listen for the word of God. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit out of the miry bog and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts towards us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, here I am. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips. As you know, O Lord, I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. This past week, I spent some time playing Disney songs on the piano with my family, and one of the songs I played was Elton John's hit, Can You Feel the Love Tonight, from the movie The Lion King. And as I was singing through the lyrics, I realized this works for this week's sermon. So let me set the scene for us. The Lion King is about a young lion named Simba. His dad's the king of the area, and he's a just and good ruler. And as a young cub, Simba is a little cocky and likes to get into mischief. His uncle, Scar, wants the throne for himself. And so he sets up a situation in which Simba gets into life-threatening danger. And Simba's dad rushes to rescue him, but he ends up dying in the process. Scar proceeds to guilt Simba into thinking that it is his fault that his father is dead and convinces him to run away, thus clearing the path for Scar to take control. Simba does run away and he finds refuge with some other outcasts. A couple of years later or so, we're not quite sure on the time there, Simba is found by his childhood friend Nala. Nala is overjoyed to find Simba because he is the rightful ruler and he can return home and end Scar's horrible rule. As Simba and Nala reconnect, they realize they have romantic feelings for one another and they sing the song, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? In the song, Nala realizes that Simba is holding back, that he's hiding something. And Simba wonders if he can tell the truth of his past. He declares it impossible because Nala would turn away from him. He doesn't want to return. What ultimately helps him decide to return and face everyone and take his rightful place as ruler? It was being reminded of his father's love. Now, this is not a perfect analogy for today, but I do want us to keep it in mind as we go through today's sermon, because it has some important truths in it. We are continuing our exploration of the stories that we can share with others about God, remembering that we are a part of that great story of God's love and redemption. We are doing this because telling our stories, tying our life to God and how God is at work in the world, that's a good way to share God's love and mercy with others to help them discover how God is at work in the world. Last week, we looked at times when we felt claimed by God. 
This week, we are looking at God's mercy. We begin with a story that Paul tells about his life. And so we're going to read from the letter to 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. Let's listen for the word of God. Paul writes, I am grateful to Christ Jesus our Lord who has strengthened me because he judged me faithful and appointed me to his service, even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of God for all people. Thanks be to God. Paul actually tells this story in similar ways in other letters, and we also learn a lot about his background in the book of Acts. But I like how Paul frames it here in this passage in 1 Timothy. He was a blasphemer, a persecutor, a man of violence. He, he was in charge of hunting down followers of Jesus and bringing them in. He gave approval for the murder of Stephen, the first recorded follower of Jesus who was killed for his faith. He was on his way to find and arrest more followers of Jesus when he had this powerful experience of God convicting him of his sin and then showing him mercy. Paul felt the truth of what he writes, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I also love what Paul writes next, that God's mercy towards Paul is an example for all of us of God's mercy, an example for all of us who would come to faith in Christ. Paul is writing these words to his protege, his student, Timothy. He's writing this letter to encourage Timothy and to help provide him an example of faithful discipleship and leadership. We too are the recipients of Paul's model, of Paul's encouragement. We can be encouraged by this story of God's grace and mercy. I mean, Paul's past was pretty bad after all. And after he was convicted of his sin, he needed the grace of a local Christian community to protect him. So just like in the song, I, I can imagine, I feel pretty confident that Paul would have been afraid that that community would turn away from him because of his past. But they didn't. They, in fact, rescued him. They showed him the mercy of God. And if you want the full story, we can read about it in Acts chapter 9. But as we read in our passage today from 1 Timothy, the love of God, the mercy of God is what sustains Paul. It's what allows him to overcome this past and be in ministry with others. God's love and mercy is what sustains us and what allows us to overcome our past and to be faithful disciples. But do we ever share the stories of what we have done wrong? We've talked before in sermons about how there's this perception that we have to be perfect in order to come to church. But we are all sinners. We all have fallen short. And sometimes that is the story that someone else needs to hear. Just as Paul shared the story of his sins with others in order to share God's mercy, so we need to be ready to share a similar story from our own lives. Now, I will say that when it comes to sharing stories about our sins, we do need to be wise with what we share. It is best to share something that won't cause harm to someone else, and not every story from our lives is appropriate. 
We need to be wise in figuring out what to share, with whom and how much. But we also know that God will give us that wisdom and will guide us in this work. So in that spirit, I want to share a story from my life. I think this happened the summer before seventh grade. I had been watching TV, probably live with Regis and Kathy, but I can't remember for sure. Anyway, I know I kept seeing these commercials for a psychic hotline. And eventually, the commercials got to me. My curiosity got the better of me. And I called the number. To be honest, I thought since it was a 1-8 number that it was toll free. I thought that I could make the call and nobody would know. And so I called. And I think I was on the phone for 30, 45 minutes, something like that. And remember that this was before cell phones were common. And so I was using our common house phone, our landline. I made the call when my parents were at work. And in the call, I'm guessing I probably had to lie about my age so that they would accept my call. I don't remember all of the details. I also don't remember much about the call. I mean, I think in the topic was probably boys I crushed on or something like that. I mean, remember, I am a preteen at this point. Anyway, I made the call and forgot about it. A week to some time later, my parents get their phone bill. And on that bill is a large charge to this 1-8 number. They ask my brother, and then they ask me about it. And I lied. I said I had no idea what it was, and my parents believed me. They grew concerned that maybe someone had tapped into their phone line. They called the phone company to dispute the charge, saying, they believed the people in their house when they said they didn't make that call. Over the next couple of months, the issue of this charge kept coming up in conversation. And every time, I felt sick to the stomach. But I kept lying. Finally, after about three months of lying to my parents, I couldn't take it anymore. I came clean and told the truth. I actually kind of remember begging to be punished. I felt so guilty and I hated disappointing my parents. I just wanted things to be resolved and to go back to the way they used to be. I mean, of course, my parents were angry with me and I was punished. I mean, I had to pay for the charge and I was grounded for three months. I distinctly remember having to eat my dessert in the kitchen with the doors closed while the rest of the family watched Lois and Clark, The New Adventures of Superman, because I wasn't allowed to watch TV as part of my grounding. I was a liar. I dishonored my parents. I broke two of the Ten Commandments that we read about in the Bible. But my parents had mercy. Our relationship didn't suffer. Their love was stronger than my sin. And through them, I came to learn and experience God's mercy and love. Their mercy and love echoed that stronger mercy and love of God that we read about in the Bible. Now, I will admit that I'm a little nervous sharing this story with y'all. It's not a proud moment for me. It's not reflective of the kind of person I want to be. And I still feel some shame over my actions. I can still feel that sick feeling of guilt in my stomach when I lied again and again and again. And there is fear, just as Simba sang about, that people will turn away from me and my ministry if they know that I have sinned in the past. But this is an important story for me to share, because I am a sinner who is in need of the mercy of others and the mercy of God. I am a sinner who has had to learn that God's love is greater than my sins. I am a sinner who has had to experience the forgiveness of others and who has learned that God's love, that my rootedness in God's love is what empowers me to carry on. It's what empowers me 
to share this story? Do we have a similar story of God's mercy and love that we can share with others? Can we model God's forgiveness for someone else? If we were Paul and were writing a letter of encouragement to someone else, what story would we tell? Amen. If you want to stay up on what is going on in the life of our congregations, um, I invite you to make sure you are receiving emails from us, whether that's our weekly email or if we have to send out special announcements. Um, if you are not receiving those, you can go to the link of the Google form link that is in the description of this video and you can sign up there. You can also um, submit prayer requests or joys you might have, or if you have any questions or anything you want to talk with me about, um, that is a good place to go, a good way to contact me, and that will allow me then to contact you. As we turn now to hold before the Lord our, our prayers, our joys and concerns, we, we begin with a moment of silence as we review all that is on our hearts and minds, as we enter into this holy time with God, this holy conversation with our Lord. So let us pray. Most merciful and loving God, thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. Thank you for your love that keeps us rooted in you, that enables us to share our stories. Thank you for those ways you have communicated your mercy, your forgiveness to us. Thank you. Lord, thank you for that promise that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us proving your love for us. That is such a beautiful promise, God, and our hearts are glad for it. Lord, we pray now and we hold before you all of the concerns we have. We pray for those who are struggling to accept your mercy, that you keep pouring it out into their lives, that they can finally know that they are loved by you and that your love your grace is greater than sin. We pray for those who are struggling with medical issues, for those who are sick and injured, and we pray for their healing. We pray for those who are in the midst of long-term medical journeys. We pray for the strength for them as they persevere, for peace in anxious times, for a guide in the difficult valleys, for wisdom, for their doctors and comfort when it all gets to be too much. We also pray your comfort and your love to surround those who mourn, that in their grief they will feel your presence with them. We pray for all of those who are struggling with mental health. Lord, we know it has been a really difficult last few years, and there are many who are more aware of the challenges that they are facing. And so we pray that they can get the help they need, the help that they seek, and that you also shine your light into their lives. We pray for our leaders as our elected leaders are beginning their new term or beginning their new year of service, we pray for them to have your wisdom and that they will govern us with your grace and mercy. And Lord, we pray for our churches, for Mount Zion and for Scottsville, that we can do your work, your kingdom work of sharing your love and light and hope, of telling the stories of how you are at work in the world of making disciples. Now we pause for a moment to hold before you the unspoken prayers 
that we carry today, but also to sit and listen for how you are speaking to us. We pray this all in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we take a moment to give thanks to God for all of the blessings we have in our lives as we enter into a time of offering our gifts to God. Um, if you would like to give an offering to the ministries, to the work of God in our churches in Scottsville or Mount Zion, um, you can mail that into the office at Scottsville. It's P.O. Box 280, Scottsville, Virginia, 24590. That should also be in the description of the video. But we'll make sure it gets to the appropriate place. But thank you for your generosity in all of the ways you are contributing to God's work in the world. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for once more giving us this opportunity to pause and to offer our gifts to you. We pray your blessings upon them, that we can use them to share the good news of your mercy, to share our stories of your forgiveness. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. And now let us sing together our hymn of praise and thanksgiving. This is a old, centuries old hymn, but these words are wonderful words. And so we can sing them with that church universal as we sing our doxology. Our closing hymn is Amazing Grace. Let us sing together.
receive the benediction. Lord, send us forth. Send us forth as people who know your grace, who know your mercy and forgiveness. Send us forth so that we can tell those stories and be a model of encouragement and hope for others. And so we go now into our week in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.